this mighty Triton is actually owned by a mate of mine. And as you can see, he's had a pretty good go at doing his own 12 volt setup. Yet, trust me when I say this, he has nothing but dramas. So today we're down at Ipswich City Auto Electrical to go through the most common mistakes people make when they're doing a DIY 12 volt system. Dodgy crimp just here. Poor earth. No fuse, no zip ties on the thing. Use the wrong gauge wiring. At the end of today's video, you can see how to make your 12 volt system super reliable so next time you go camping, you have nothing but good times. Now, of course, I'm not gonna do this entirely myself. In fact, I'm gonna call in the experts. Now, you guys all remember Ben. Now, Ben has done a lot of the work on Sooty and uh, also the Dirty 30 as well, done all the 12 volt systems on those vehicles. As you can see, this is what we're dealing with, mate. What do you reckon we rip right in and uh, see what we find? Yeah, we'll give it a go. A bit messy, but we'll uh, <laughs> we'll clean her up and get her good, yeah. So of course, every 12 volt system, whether it be in a canopy, needs to come back to your start battery to get power, and that's exactly what Ben's doing now, is disconnecting the um, positive. Now, first things first, mate, what can you see? Um, so we have a pretty dodgy crimp just here. Yep. Um, so it, it hasn't been installed in, in the lug basically um, correctly. Following that, no fuse. Obviously we want a fuse on our um, positive cable running towards our dual battery. The problem there, of course, if we have an issue between here and the canopy that rubs through, you're gonna get a fire. So that is really, yep. really dangerous. Definitely. And then following from that, no zip ties on the thing. So to not fuse it's one, <laughs> and then obviously not secure your cables a second. So so yep. you do increase that chance of, of having a rub. Right, let's check out this 12 volt set up at the back here. Ben, you wanna start ripping this apart, mate. I might um, mm -hmm. jump on the other side and uh, disconnect that battery and uh, let's see what yeah. we find. Sweet. The first thing we can see that all the loads for the entire 12 volt system come off this one particular battery via these two wires, the earth and the positive. First thing you'll notice is he's used the wrong gauge wiring. This is too thin to run everything that he wants to run. So um, it's a good thing that we are replacing this. And the duct tape over the thing, it is, look, it does provide some sort of insulation, but um, it is the wrong type. You should be using at least, it's a bit of heat shrink would look really nice and do a better job. I've just uh, basically started at this point here. So this is sort of the center point of the 12 volt system, obviously. He's just gone with a generic, pre-wired box, so all the wiring in that scheme of things is, is pretty standard. Um, as for everything else, he's obviously got pretty undersized wiring with everything. So all these light outputs, all these switches for um, a fan for his fridge, um, stuff like that. And then just the general taping over the over the crimps and whatnot. So it's, it's just on a bit of a messy side. And um, obviously you run into a lot of risk with, with shorts and, and whatnot. The main inlet cable from your alternator is this guy. Um, obviously at the start we assumed that there was a fuse at the back. Um, we've now found out that there's no fuse on it. Um, so that's obviously a potential for a fire hazard um, and a short. Uh, so that's one thing that will be amended when we go through with the new system. Some of these connectors are actually quite loose as well and that's going to have a lot of dramas, especially you do a bit of corrugation work or yep. you're on yeah, a big, big yep. camping trip, these things are going to get loose and then you're never going to find where that fault is that's going to be behind your panel and stuff like that. So, and Ben, you'd have to say one of the most common things you find is poor earth. Definitely. On a day-to-day -day basis, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one's no exception, obviously. So, um, he has got a decent size earth cable. I will yeah. give him that. Yeah. It's pretty pretty solid, but just the location of the earth is pretty average up on top of the canopy. So it's not secured to the chassis of the vehicle nice. It's on rubber mounts. So he's not gonna get a great earth up here. We've just found another one and that is the lug size as opposed to the bolt size. So that allows a bit of movement in there. So if the bolt comes slightly loose, you'll have a bit of movement on there and it'll obviously work itself loose. You'll have bad contacts and then it'll lead to faults with your, with your dual battery system. A lot of people will actually make a mistake when they're joining their connectors. Now in this particular one, we just unbolted it and the connector came straight off. Now it has been soldered but obviously that connection has broken off over time and they, they tend to do that they get a little bit brittle in there and it hasn't been crimped or um, soldered properly but it's little things like that through your whole 12 volt system that um, really make reliability a bit questionable look at that that's just pulled straight out and um, the best bit about not being fused as well that causes a fire almost straight away in just about every single setup, you're gonna to need to run wires from the front of the vehicle to the back. Now, that's a very important wire. It's the main wire, essentially, from your alternator to your whole system here. Now, where you run that wire is super important. Now, Ben, you would have seen this a few times in your career, mate. Having, having a wire that's exposed 
and uh, also not protected. Yeah, so he's he's right next to the tyre. So, you know, driving through the bush, picks up a stick, rip the cable straight out. So you run into the possibility of having a short and also a fire. So this one here is, um, it's, it, this has done the right thing. It's gone down the chassis rail, which is a great spot to protect that wire. But as it's come up to the canopy, well, it's just nice and loose here. And it's actually touching the tire. So that's a disaster waiting to happen. So it might look like that we're really having a go at poor Zach when he's 12 volt skills. But um, this is all too common in so many setups. So what we're doing here is just trying to highlight all the mistakes. So uh, you don't make them yourself. And then we'll go through with Ben and actually show you how to do this properly. So you can just take a couple of these tips and um, get your 12 volt system so it is super bush proof and reliable. Now, check out this. It's an absolute mess of wiring and there was so many issues with it that no wonder why um, it never worked properly. Heck, there was even bits that I quite class as dangerous. So yes, we could have spent some time and actually gone through it and um, fixed up all those connections and made it somewhat pretty reliable, but we decided we'd go through and actually rip the whole lot out and install it with a brand new system. So this gear right here is essentially what we're gonna be transforming that 12 volt setup with. So it's gonna be ultra reliable and um, the good news is quite simple as well. So this is the heart of the system here. It's a Manager 30. Uh, it's basically three chargers in one. So it's a solar regulator, a 12 volt charger, and also a 240 volt charger. So when he gets to a, you know, a campsite with 240 mains power, he might be back home at the shed, he can actually charge the whole system up with this as well. It's a pretty cool sort of setup. This right here is actually new to Red Arc. It's a TVMS Rogue. This will be basically running all of his accessories inside the canopy. Now, while you don't need to, we're gonna go one step further and actually run a Red Vision screen. It actually interacts very well with the TVMS Rogue. Now, this will give you basically exactly what you can do on your phone, but in a nice little screen that you can see right here. You've probably seen me run these in my vehicles. Absolutely love them. You'll be able to do everything from look at the state of charge of your whole 12 volt system to be able to switch everything on and off just via this one little screen here. So as you can see, uh, nice and simple, very basic setup, and it's gonna completely transform what's going on in there. And combined with Ben and the boys doing some really neat wiring and making everything bush proof, this is gonna be one system that'll never fail off-road. We're basically just going through with our fit out now and pre-wiring it all. So currently what we're doing is, is the earth. Um, and basically the best way to do it is to run straight from a battery. So as you can see here, we've run a nice thick, decent earth cable. So we've we've actually run a 2 bns So you should get around 190 amps through it. If they want to put an inverter in, something along those lines, it'll be able to handle that. But it also allows for a lot higher current to be able to flow through it. So we're not going to get any voltage drop across the whole board. Uh, and it's going to be able to provide us with everything we need, essentially. Following from our earth cable to our, our second battery, we've also run a new earth cable all the way back to our main battery. Um, so we've gone with a, a pretty standard 8 BNS size for this. So that's basically standard across the whole board of, of dual battery systems. By running this cable, we fixed two issues, which is our really thin cable that we had um, and also our bad earth. So running it back to the main battery, we won't have any voltage drop uh, and, and definitely won't have any failures with our, with our dual battery. So we've got a couple of wires here at the moment. We're just about to chuck some lugs on. So I thought I'd just give you guys a bit of a rundown basically on what a good practice to crimp a wire is. So um, essentially we want to strip our sheath off the outside of the wire um, and slide our lug on. So um, when we're putting a lug on, obviously we want a lug suited to the cable size, but also the eyelet suited to whatever we're bolting it to. Um, so when we're, when we're doing that, we basically want to see a bit of copper come out the end of the crimp. So that way you know that you've got enough wire coming through and it's going to hold on nice and secure. Um, in regards to crimping, basically you just want to get a nice solid crimp on him uh, and all through the entire, the entire crimp. So if you look over that, basically you'll see a nice flat crimp the whole way through it. It's not raised in certain areas, it's pretty flat and it'll be very solid. Cable already comes with a external insulation on it, which prevents rubs and whatnot. But for an extra bit of protection, we always try and put a bit of split tube on it. So that just provides extra protection in a way. And then to finish it nice and neat, we always use a bit of heat shrink. So it just prevents shorts on that little bit of metal. You wouldn't think it, but it is possible. So we always put a little bit of heat shrink over the end and, and usually color coordinate it. So, you know, blacks, earth, reds positive. 
So what we're up to now is just wiring everything basically. So we're going to run our wiring for all of our lights, our outlets, our fridge, etc. Wire it back to the Rogue uh, and we're gonna have our screen wiring, all of that ready to go. So all of our plugs will be here and we're gonna make a face plate up for all of it. So once we make the face plate, it should be as simple as just plugging everything in and away we go. Previously, we obviously had no fuse on the car for our dual battery system. Um, so what we've done is we've gone ahead and installed a fuse basically um, from our main feed to our dual battery. So we use a MIDI fuse. The reason we use them, one is for high, high current. They actually have a lot more surface area on the, on the fuse itself. So when you're using a standard blade fuse, you run the risk of melting the fuse holder. So if, you, if you're doing something high current, we tend to use a MIDI fuse a lot more. Um, you, you don't run into the risk of, of melting the fuse holder, blowing the fuse, and then obviously causing a fire. In addition to that, it's a slow blow fuse. So with a standard blade fuse holder, they're, they're referred to as a, as a fast blowing fuse. So if you have a 20 amp fuse and something draws 20 amps straight away, it will blow straight away. Um, with MIDI fuses, depending on the amperage, but if you have a 50 amp fuse and your BCDC will draw or your manager will draw 70 amps for an initial spike, it won't blow straight away. However, if it continues to draw that over 30 seconds, say, it will blow the fuse. Uh, so that will save obviously your wiring um, and your BCDC. Sometimes they do like, like drawing uh, initial spike. Um, so that way you don't run into any problems with your dual battery and not charging. So while we've been running our main power feed, we went ahead and ran our earth back to our battery as well. So as we said earlier, it's very important to either run back to the main battery stud or where the main battery earths onto the chassis or body. Uh, we've just done that to ensure that we have no voltage drop and we have a good earth so you don't run into any charging problems or any problems in regard to your battery going flat because otherwise your beers will get hot. So just to keep it all nice and cold and your dual battery system running good. Previously we had our wiring running up the, the middle of the chassis and then coming out next to the tyre. So, so what we've done is we've gone ahead and run it again, um, zip tying up on the inside of the chassis rail. So you have a lot less chance of a stick or something catching that wire and pulling it out. So zip tied right up on the inside of the, of the chassis rail and then nice and neat up the back of the headboard of the cab and then yeah, into the, into the canopy. Now the boys are actually going to put a, a cover on there so you won't see any of the wiring but I wanted to catch it before the cover went on just so you can see exactly what's going on in a little bit more detail. Now it looks pretty fancy but trust me when I say this, it is super simple, way more simple than the old setup and it has a stack more functionality. Now what you're essentially looking at is a Red Arc TVMS Rogue. Now think of that like the ECU for your whole 12 volt system. Just like you'd have an ECU in your engine bay to control your engine management, this does the same job but for your 12 volt. Now Ben, you've installed a bunch of these mate. Can you take us through some of the functionality and what this is actually doing? Yeah mate, absolutely. So basically we're just eliminating switches, uh, outlets and whatnot and simplifying it right down. So. The benefit of the of the road is obviously you don't have external fuses. It's all internally fused. Mm -hmm. um, so we have any shorts or whatever, we will get an alert on the screen. Um, but hopefully we won't get any shorts no, now that we've, we've all done it. And one of the things you can do, of course, you can have um, temperature probes, you can have water level sensors. So if you've got a water tank, you can see exactly how much water you got left via your screen. Yep. Um, we've actually, you boys have run a probe into the fridge, I believe. Yes. So yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can see straight away either on your phone when you're driving your car or on the screen exactly what your fridge is doing, which is super important if you ask me. Um, go through the dimmable light function because I think that is really neat. Yeah, yeah, so by a simple hold on the button basically, we yeah. can either dim the light down or if you grab him again, it'll dim straight back up. If you ask me mate, I reckon Zach is gonna be absolutely stoked with this setup, mate. Righto, the moment has come. Now this is Zach, he owns this vehicle. Zach actually works behind the scenes at four-wheel drive 24-7. Now, when you trusted us with your vehicle, what did you think? Oh, I was excited to see what'll happen. It's um, a bit of an upgrade. A bit of an upgrade. Yeah. Well, we didn't just upgrade your system, mate. We grabbed your system, we threw it in the bin. That's right. <laughs> Boys, over up, let's have a look. 
Have a look at that, oh, mate. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, you've put it behind, wow, that's incredible. Yeah, that's exactly right, mate. So we've actually got a Red Arc TVMS Rogue. We've got a Major 30, and it's all switched. So all your switches um, are all switched via this Red Vision system oh, right wow. here. Oh, wow. So everything right here. The cool thing is all the functionality of that, and there's a lot, you've got a, you've got a temperature probe in your fridge so you can see exactly oh, what your fridge goodness. is doing. You've got lots of lights on the vehicle. You've got 12 volt inports. You've got an Anderson plug input. Your solar's all hooked up. And the best news about the whole thing, Zach, is your vehicle's not gonna catch on fire anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> if you could really boil it down to one key takeaway, is you'll never need to think about your 12 volt system wow. again. Every time you go bush, you don't need to worry, is my fridge gonna work? Is my camp lights gonna work? Is my car gonna catch on fire? <laughs> no, you don't need to worry about any of that. You can literally just go and enjoy camping, which is wow. what a good 12 volt system will do. Wow, that's incredible. A bit more than an upgrade, that system. That's... Yeah, that's a transformation, mate. Mm. That's, that is. You've outdone yourself, gentlemen. This is a crazy. This is this is not what I pictured at all. Yeah. Not what I pictured at all. So it's amazing. Well, as you can see, Zach has absolutely blown away with the results, and it's been a full transformation inside this canopy, and for good reason too. Um, what he had in there was um, nothing short of a mess, which was actually quite dangerous in the back of this Triton. But as you can see now, he's got a very practical, not to mention reliable setup that's gonna serve him for many years to come. Well, hopefully you guys learn a few bits and pieces, not to mention got a bit of inspiration for your own 12 volt system. Now, why don't you do us a favor and let us know in the comments below what you plan to do with your 12 volt in your four wheel drive. I reckon for Zach, the first thing he's gonna be doing is turning that key and putting this 12 volt system to the test around the campfire with a few cold ones. Well, that's enough from me. I'll see you around next time.